New Jersey's poised to legalize recreational marijuana next year, but speakers at the AAA summit on impaired driving urged an audience of some 300 cops, lobbyists, and advocates to slow the legislative process down. This is a big deal. We're legalizing a drug for fun without really understanding how to manage the highway safety implications of it, not to mention all the other public health and social issues that come with legalizing marijuana. Nationally, the number of traffic fatalities involving drug-impaired drivers eclipsed alcohol-impaired drivers in 2015, according to Kansas Trooper Sean Hankins. His state borders Colorado, which legalized weed in 2014. Kansas saw traffic fatalities spike 20 percent last year, he said. We have a lot of weed in our state, thanks to Colorado. It's not a coincidence that we have an increased number of fatality crashes because and that legalization of marijuana is occurring all across this country. But legalization advocates disagree, arguing causation is not correlation. What it says is someone at some point in time in like the last month or so had used cannabis and at some point in time was involved in a fatal accident. So they've seen an increase in people using cannabis and, and, and fatal accidents, but not a correlation between. Police trying to enforce driving laws can't give a breathalyzer test for marijuana, but last year Kansas did study a portable drug testing device made by Allaire that detects recent marijuana use in oral fluids. It's non-invasive and doesn't require medical personnel to administer. The device scored a more than 80 percent accuracy rate and could at least help officers evaluate drivers. Wouldn't it be nice to have if that officer feels, okay, this guy might be incapable of safely operating, an additional tool that they know that they could use roadside. It gives them some sort of an idea, presumptively, what might be impairing them after roadside evaluation. Officials from Colorado agreed and advised New Jersey that legal weed will change the culture here, and so rules, regs, and protocols should be in place before that happens. And traffic cops need specific training. It's making sure that they're making good decisions, that they're not arresting people who shouldn't be just because they smell like it or they've recently used it. I think the culture in Colorado has changed that without the taboo, that I think uh, more people have access to it than before. I think it is a very high-grade product that people may not be used to having. And I can get my message to the general public through the industry in, into the dispensaries. The public needs to be educated, too. Colorado's launched some funny, safe-driving PSAs that show getting high can impair performance. Meanwhile, agencies continue to gather data about marijuana's impact on safety and people. This isn't going to happen. Like Phil Murphy's going to walk in the door and we're going to all of a sudden have recreational marijuana available in New Jersey. I suspect what we're going to see is there's going to be a process running out in the legislature. It will probably coincide with the budget process towards the end of June. It's so very important that this is not a knee-jerk reaction with incoming Governor Murphy. Um, we need to really take a look at this. This is going to affect all aspects of our community. That message should be appreciated by the governor-elect. Phil Murphy has said he wants to study other states' experiences with legalizing marijuana before signing a law in New Jersey. In Lawrenceville, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News.